wireless for communications. And this is what we're mostly interested in here. We have many, many options and frequencies available. We have many technologies. We have Wi-Fi, we have cellular, mobile, connect using satellite connection for wireless communications, different frequency bands, different standards. How would we make the decision what to choose? One is the range that we want. How far is that wireless signal supposed to go? What is the power consumption we can allow? Do we have stable power? Do we need to run on solar panels, wind turbines maybe? Next, what is the bandwidth we are wanting to provide? What is the requirements in terms of how much data I'm sending through this? Often the most important is my budget, the cost of this. How much can I spend on this? For community networks and for campus network, most of the time, Wi-Fi will be our choice. And why is this? One very important reason is the spectrum considerations. Wi-Fi uses something which is called ISM frequencies, industrial, scientific, and medical. These are frequencies that are free for use in most places on this planet. They are license exempt is a term we're using. You don't have to apply for a license. You don't have to buy a license. This might still mean that you have to ask somebody for permission to do this, depending on where you are. But in general, you don't have to pay to use a license. And that's a main dif difference to cellular networks where it's frequencies that some companies bought in a, typically in an auction and that they bought the right to use for. So that is one reason why Wi-Fi wireless is so attractive to us. Not all spectrum is equal in terms of ownership and Wi-Fi is in the parts of the spectrum that are free to use. Wi-Fi standards, there are many of them. They go, at the time of this talk, back a little bit more than 20 years. In the beginning, we used the terms 802.11b, a, g, and these were the three first ones historically, the ones I just named B, A, and G. They're all part of the 802.11 standard, a general wireless networking standard. And they then came in as substandards B, the first, then A and G. Over time, N, A, C, A, X. And then just a couple of years ago, somebody had the bright idea to make things a little bit easier and give them names that are more like what they're doing in mobile networks, 3G, 4G, 5G. Let's give them numbers. Let's call them Wi-Fi 4, 5, 6. Now, that makes it a little bit easier, maybe. Wi-Fi 4 corresponds to 802.11n, 5 to AC. 6 to AX. The earlier ones didn't get an official name, but we inofficially call them Wi Fi 1, 2, and 3. And then immediately it got complicated again because just last year we opened 6 gigahertz as an additional ISM frequency, at least currently in some countries. Other countries are still on their way. And then Unluckily, 6 gigahertz wasn't included in Wi-Fi 6. That would have been nice if those had matched. So we now have Wi-Fi 6E, which means Wi-Fi 6 with 6 gigahertz added. So the attempt to make things simpler and immediately got kind of complicated again. 
the main differences we are interested in here. Most of the time we're asking for speed. Now the way different Wi-Fi standards over time have reached faster speeds is mainly by doing three things. One is channel access, the modulation, the way in which data is modulated into the carrier wave, the way we get data into that frequency, you could say. Um, there's different ways of doing that. You might spread out evenly, direct spread, shared spectrum. You might put it on different sub frequencies. You might have hopping, like using different frequencies over different times. There's many such ways. These have improved over time, and this is one contribution to higher data throughput. Another one is the mere bandwidth of the channels available. We have made the bands within each frequency wider and wider, and we've added more of them. And then lastly, we've worked with something called MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. That means instead of just having one or two antennas, you have four, eight, 16. You do multiplexing, you could say, multiple in, multiple out. With that, speeds have gone from a few megabit per second in the early days to currently with Wi-Fi 6, something that reaches the gigabit per second class with a theoretical limit of around 10 gigabit per second. I'm saying theoretical because that's not something you see on an end user device. Also remember protocols have an overhead. When we're saying something has, let's say the, the oldest standard, 802.11b, we had 11 megabit per second, but only five of that, five and a little bit, were available for data, the rest is protocol overhead. So this is the rough overview. Let me quickly get back to the question of data throughput and speed. So yes, most of the time we're asking, how fast is it? How much can we do? Already at this point though, a comment, do I always have to go for the latest and fastest? Because it's funny, the, the second question that typically comes when building wireless networks is, how can I limit people's usage of data? How can I limit bandwidth? So the two are sort of a bit funny together. A, we want a lot of speed, and then we're asking how to limit that speed. Sometimes the latest and fastest and most expensive isn't the best choice. Thank you.